Okay, now we get onto the, uh, the more difficult side, if you like. Uh, I'll just note that uh, taking the calendar works part, apart from a lot of dirt, I didn't see anything obvious. However, flipping it over to this side, there is one immediate thing that concerns me, and that is the hairspring. So the hairspring to me does look like it's been pushed to one side, so there's, there's more the coils are wider on this car side than the other. Now that could be just that um, I need to move the regulator around and see what's going on, but I'm more inclined to believe that it's taken a knock somewhere and it's bent. And if it's bent, I'm not great at hairsprings. Um, so we'll have to see what we can do. So in actual fact, the first thing I'm gonna go and remove is the um, balance itself. And they're quite interesting on this because they've got this rather large cock and <laughs> that um, is held on on both sides by a screw and the thing did try and run then now it does if you if I shook this watch while it was still uh, in the case it would tick for two or three seconds so it you know it has shown signs of life and usually when they show signs of life like that that's enough for me to grip my teeth and try and get um, the thing fixed okay so in actual fact now it's removed it doesn't with my naked eye it doesn't look too bad i will inspect that further later on it's spinning nice and freely and that's the main thing and of course removing the balance as early as possible is a good practice certainly if you're new to watchmaking because that thing is again hard to replace hard to repair and um, you know you want to treat that with the best respect you can get because that's what makes the whole thing work so now we're going to uh, strip down the movement side and there are two um, springs actually here and here which are to do with the um, pushers and these things do like to go um, into orbit should we say uh, certainly when they're under tension now while they're in position here I find certainly with this one all I need to do is pull it back and the tension is released and because the tension is released we now don't have to worry too much uh, about losing it because uh, it's not going to fly anywhere and then likewise this one this one is actually very long as we'll find out when we go in the movement and hopefully i can get it just out of its post like so and you can see it wants to go all the way over here and as far as i'm concerned now that is safe other than we want to be careful that we don't knock them <coughs> excuse me um when we are uh, moving the watch around now normally we'd want to now release any tension in the mainspring and it's quite difficult on these because the mainspring is a bit further down but I can just get a screwdriver in the hole and I can turn it and I can move the click to one side however there is no power at all uh, which is interesting I'm actually tempted to wind it a little bit excuse me for a moment i'm sort of diagnosing yeah so when i it's either there's either power in the mainspring and it's not spinning around because it's full of dirt or there's something wrong there because it's not holding any power at all so we want to remove this top plate here which is the automatic framework or the bit where the rotor goes it uh, winds everything up now there is a pawl lever under here or it's called a pawl lever some people know it's the magic fingers and that connects to this driving wheel here and that sometimes has a bit of tension on it when you release these screws so you've got to be a little bit careful that that also doesn't go flying so one screw at a time rule And then I'm just going to, there we go, so you might have heard it click. And 
and that's the pull lever uh, it sits on this little plate that's the little driving wheel for instance and there we are so now we're getting a bit further into the movement now and so the next one is this uh, the chronograph bridge and again that has three screws one two and three and we'll remove that with a bit of care and because the tension's off on these springs we haven't got to worry too much about knocking those Ah yes, now word of note, you can see what this here looks like a spring, that's uh, not a spring, it doesn't look like a spring does it, it looks like a screw, uh, you don't really want to turn that, that is all to do with uh, parts of the chronograph mechanism and that should be set by the factory so it should be fine, I'll talk about that potentially on the rebuild, so you don't want to uns or put your screwdriver in there, it's going to be this one here. And the final one. And now the bridge to gently lift off. Okay, it was only in editing that I realized that once I lifted the chrono bridge up, I was missing a part, which is the intermediate minute recording wheel. It's a little wheel and I'll put it in there in the picture. And highlighted red so Jeff I'm gonna to have to source that wheel too for you uh, my bad I can't really believe I missed it on the uh, disassembly but uh, there you go my mistake sorry guys back to the video we did hear a bit of a click uh, and that was actually see this lever here this is um, thing that goes around the hammer and uh, I didn't release the tension on that which I should have done um, that just lips over there so when it was in situ let me just try and show you that because of course you guys are following along potentially so that would be sitting on there so before you take the screws out you just want to pull that towards the movement and up a bit so it goes over its post and then it's not under any tension so sorry about that um, okay so now we're looking a little bit more detail at the uh, chronograph um, parts so we do have these springs that I told you about and because the tension has been released they will be a lot easier to move out the way and keep safe. Now this is called the hammer and that controls whether the chronograph is working or not. So that touches this, which is the chronograph wheel, and that makes the second hand, uh, well the, the hand itself, stop. And that just lifts off freely. Um, and then we have the minute recording wheel and again you've got to be very careful because that as you can see it's got the long uh, axle and again that is what that little sub second or sec the, the sub dial hand sits on so again we need to keep that uh, very safe and away from any damage and danger and then we've got these coupling levers uh, and they um, sit on both sides of the chronograph wheel and as the chronograph is operated to uh, stop these will go in and pinch so we have to remove those and we've got these two screws and then we've got to move uh, everything else here also So these have got two screws and this one is a pretty normal uh, screw whereas this one because they're easy to get mixed up but you would they're obvious when you're trying to fit them now I'm not sure whether you guys are going to see this or not if I put it in my hand perhaps the threads are a bit lower down and it's got a step and the reason for that 
of course is it's fitting it's sitting above these it holds these together basically uh, so it needs that um, that extra gap so again try not to mix those up if you can help it and we need to now try and remove the first lever and Rodico certainly helps and then the second one uh, it's usually resting quite snugly on this post and I just like to try and lever that a little bit gently to get that one out of the way and then we've got the what's called the column wheel which is in here and at the moment it's got that little spring attached and the way I do that I'm hoping my B camera roll is going to pick this up better is I put the screwdriver in here and I am going to twist it slightly to move it so it just comes out of the gear but first <laughs> you can tell I'm doing this on the fly first we need to remove the screw and then in order to remove the column wheel we repeat what I've just been saying and there is the column wheel and it normally has a little uh, round washer on here as well uh, but on this particular watch it's actually stayed within the hole and um, I'm trying to see if I could get that out but I think it's just too much dirt in there there we go it's just released so perhaps you can see that uh, on the mat there again that is a really important part uh, very easily lost either in cleaning or by an accident with the tweezers so you've got to make sure you keep that somewhere very safe indeed and essentially guys that is the chronograph um, part removed um, there is this little cover plate here which I'll take off later on and that is to get access to the jewels so for cleaning purposes I remove that but at the moment I'm going to leave it in situ um, so now it is it's like a normal watch from here on in um, we have got to remove first of all the ratchet wheel for the mainspring and I heard that, but hopefully you heard that too. That was the whole mainspring unwinding within itself, which is not uh, good uh, to hear that, but clearly this thing was jammed um, and I've just released the tension. Uh, we've also then got the, the click, uh, which we may as well remove while we're here. Uh, one screw takes that away. okay so now it's the train wheel bridge or this entire part here is the bridge and we'll lift that off and then it's pretty much like an any other normal seiko underneath uh, it's held on by three screws as always and that one's decided to go walk is in my movement holder so there's one turn it round Here is the next, and then the final one is up here on the top. And then the bridge, again carefully lift that off, and then that reveals, if you're used to Seiko's, what you've seen all day long although this is the chronograph wheel and this is very important it's quite a complex um, component and there it is uh, it's got all the the clutch built in there that's how it works and i'll have to inspect that closely to make sure that there's no damage but for now i'll put that to one side um, then you've got the third wheel which will always just lift out as per normal the barrel also will come out at this stage and I will 
we'll take out the pallet bridge the pallet fork uh, the escape and then the final two pieces so we've got the center wheel bridge held on by one screw Again, it looks exactly the same as a 6119 and the center wheel. And that is it, folks. That is how you take apart a 6319. Now, there are two variants. There is an A and a B variant. And there are subtle differences between the two. Some components don't actually are not compatible, and it's mainly to do with the um, one of the bridges and the way the um, minute recording wheel is done from memory. I've done both movements; they're very very similar. So if you're this particular one we've got here is I'm trying to remember. It says on the cover that this is the six three one nine B. I need to double check that actually, but by the time I put the video up, uh, we'll be sure that this one is the B. Um, uh, so the, the two variants are very, very slightly different, but if you're wanting to follow along to this video, then it is pretty much self-explanatory. You'll just see this very subtle difference, that's all. So uh, now I have to clean all these parts absolutely thoroughly. Uh, one word I would say that if you are then gonna clean the parts and clean them in an ultrasonic, especially, is that the dial feet that you loosened earlier on which are here and over the other side that you tighten those back up uh, it's probably good to tighten them all the way in really uh, because they do have a tendency to vibrate out in the ultrasonic and if they do first of all you've got to remember that they've fallen out so you can find them because if you tip the water away it's gone um, and they are quite a bit of a pig to <laughs> screw back in so I haven't really seen anything that obvious other than copious amounts of dirt on this this movement all the parts look really um, well you know well used and tarnished so we'll see if we can clean this up the one I did for myself was a lot worse actually and I did get that running but it did take weeks and weeks and weeks of trying um, so hopefully this one might be a little bit better of course we've got the issue with the dial to contend with but other than that it looks like most of the parts are going to be okay hopefully so there we are that is the end of this video and um, all I want to say is if you've got this far thank you very much for watching I hope that you find this useful I've been trying to or well, wanting to do the, the 6319 videos for quite a while because I get asked for it a lot um, and it's all very the disassembly actually is quite easy uh, to film the assembly i think is going to be a lot different especially if i want to show you all the oiling that uh, is required and where that goes so here we go that's the end of the video please uh, give me a like i love the likes it really means a lot to me and it does help with the uh, google's algorithm as well um, definitely leave as many comments as you want down below. I will read every single one of them and I'll try and reply to as many as I can as well. If you want to ask me questions, please ask me questions. I don't know the ins and outs of everything to do with this movement, um, but I will do my best to try and um, answer them if I can. Again, thanks very much for watching. Check out my Instagram account, uh, which is My Retro Watches, of course. And don't forget to have a look at my website, which is uh, MyRetroWatches.com. You'll see all my collection of watches on there. So I'll see you in the rebuild video, which will be coming soon. Bye for now.